good recording. Um, so I'm talking here with John Gray on my left and Eric Peterson on my right, who are the creators and stars of the classic Canadian play, Billy Bishop Goes to War, which they're reviving at Soul Pepper Theatre this summer. Now, uh, John and Eric, uh, you originally created this play back in 1978, and I believe it premiered at the uh, Vancouver East Cultural Center. Yes. Um, maybe you could uh, just tell me how the play came to came to be and uh, uh, that first uh, that first sure. premiere performance. I'll, I, I can start, and you can butt in. Why don't you do that? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll correct you. You correct. <laughs> We both uh, were working at, on various shows with Theatre Passenger Eye in Toronto, which was at the time quite concerned about Canadian heroes. And so everyone was kind of scrappling about for uh, Canadian heroes. And Eric gave me a book about, by Bishop called Winged Warfare, which uh, it was an account of his first 48 kills. It was done in the middle of the war, so it was heavily censored, but it was an account. and. Uh, we were, it, there were a couple of things that were interesting to me about it. But one was that I hadn't, he'd been kind of forgotten, especially, you know, in the anti-war movement. You know, we, it, it, uh, with that generation, nobody was interested in kind of warriors. And, this, uh, and uh, so that it might make a show. And we had uh, done a show called Herringbone. Herringbone by two of us. In which Eric played several parts at once. And we learned several techniques for doing that. And so we thought this would be a way for us to actually put on a show for very little money that we could get put on. We could, you know, maybe make some money by a car, maybe, or something. <laughs> <laughs> entrepreneurial. Yeah, we were being entrepreneurial. We were, we were being entrepreneurial. And then Eric went, I think, to St. Barts. You, you went. I could have been in St. Barts. Yes, you went off to the Caribbean. And I was lucky enough to land uh, a, a part-time job teaching acting, which paid for me because I was to write a script. Okay? I wrote a script. And then when Eric came back, we researched and we uh, uh, re reworked his two models. Uh, we re rewrote it. You know, together we played a lot of pool. Yeah, we played a lot of pool, <laughs> and that's and when we would discuss things. Oh, yeah, John's a very good pool player. Um, no, I'm not. not. Well, no. you were better than I was. <laughs> well, you had your moments. You could, you know. Uh, and we uh, got some, uh, did some research and that sort of thing, and then uh, uh, it opened at the Vancouver East Cultural Center because. I had a connection with them uh, uh, because of Tamados. Eric and I were both in a theater company in Vancouver called Tamados, so we had an inn. So we started in the Vancouver Cultural Center. It was November of 78. And it wasn't. Uh, it was. Uh, there was a newspaper strike and a postal strike at the time. This is a poor, not a good idea when you're going to <laughs> open a play. But it did well enough that it sort of held over. And... Then we did a, a, a run with Pass Moran, did some touring and stuff. And in the meantime, uh, Lewis Allen, who had produced Annie, had came to see it. He was brought there by somebody. And uh, he uh, said, well, I'm, I, we got to get my friend Mike Nichols for a cigar. And, and, <laughs> for a cigar. and uh, uh, we didn't believe it. And, and we were touring, and Nichols showed up, and we were on Broadway. And it's amazing what happens in Canada, of course, when you get some sort of recognition out of the country. Is that Canadians take a big interest all of a sudden. This is it's a sad thing, but it's true. And and so writing with one of the themes of the of the play. Yes, that's right. The <laughs> colonial mentality. Yes, right. yes, exactly. Right. So you uh, you took the play, this this little play, which was basically a piano player and an actor, mm -hmm. and you took this to Broadway. Mm -hmm which uh, is traditionally known as the, the home of the big uh, garish American yes. musical. Yes. Um, so how, how did you do on Broadway? Uh, we got great reviews and we lasted a week. Uh, uh, we also ran at the Delis in off-Broadway for a few months. But uh, no, uh, Americans weren't overly keen on coming in to see two unknown Canadians do a show about an unknown Canadian war hero in a war that America didn't win. But uh, despite that, I mean, uh, this play has had, uh, 
Again, the parlance, well, I guess, the incredible, incredible well, that's legs. The, that's right? the, that, the, the paradox is that, you know, you open in Broadway. The next day we were reviewed in 80, 80 publications, and, and, and we got good reviews. So other productions started cropping up. I mean, it was the most produced show in America for four years. Now, not in the biggest theaters, but, you know, certainly. I mean, you know, but it was produced and it's still produced. Yeah. No, and again, I, I mean, uh, really, the, the, you might say that the failure on, uh, on Broadway was due to our American producers. <laughs> oh, yes. We no, were no, misproduced no, no. there. No, that's just not exactly He said, he said, he said <laughs> call me up. He said, I'll misproduce anything you write. <laughs> <laughs> so we Canadians did everything <laughs> right. It was the damn Americans that screwed it up. Anyway, well, um, but also we had, I mean, it was very exciting when we first opened and, you know, to have this. Uh, show it, and suddenly all the kind of uh, things that began to happen because even in the first time we were because as you say Lewis Allen saw it first when we were doing it in Vancouver and this this you know, this prospect loomed on the horizon that we'd be going to Broadway which we sort of went oh sure sure <laughs> you know well we'd never been working in in, in like a, a, a theater a, a building that was meant to be a theater and uh, uh, we worked in converted you know churches. Railway station. And it wasn't really the object of doing Funeral the play powers. either. And the other one that came up was the Edinburgh Festival because uh, when this yes. was going to happen in several years' time, and Vancouver was going to be a, a sister city um, uh, to Edinburgh at, at the specific festival. So we were invited right away to be one of the, you know, we weren't even in the fringe. We were kind of be a main stage. And when that did happen, it turned out to be a very exciting. Uh, Part of the and that brought us to the West End in London. Yeah, you see. but uh, really the great fun too was that we did two wonderful tours back and forth across Canada, and that was a that was so much that was very exciting to see the kind of response we had and the kind of connection we suddenly made with audiences that about this play. That was, you know, it was everything that really we set out to do actually came to pass. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. can be very kind of surprising. It's kind of alarming. <laughs> 